After 10,000 hours of operation or after diaphragm failure, you may be required to replace the diaphragm. In this video, I will explain the proper techniques of replacing the diaphragm, check for problem areas, prime the hydraulic system, and start off. Be sure that the pressure has been completely released from the discharge side of the pump and that all the fluid has been drained from the liquid end. Flush any chemical residue with clean water. It is possible to replace the diaphragm without draining the oil from the drive case, unless product has entered the drive case during diaphragm failure towards the hydraulic side. This is only possible if you do not remove the plunger body. The diaphragm is 35,000 thick. It is made of a Teflon material. The diaphragm is sealed between the liquid end and the plunger body by two machine grooves that are offset in both parts, crushing the diaphragm and utilizing the cold flow properties of the Teflon to seal the two liquid sides. Before disassembly, you may want to mark the top of the liquid end because it is possible to install it upside down. If you do not mark the liquid end, you can tell the discharge valves by looking down on the valve and noticing the ball guide on top of the ball. Remove the eight liquid end bolts. You may want to use a small drip pan or drip tray to catch any excess hydraulic oil behind the diaphragm or water that may be trapped. Take a good look at the diaphragm. Check for any signs of touching the contour plate or the liquid end. These will be key indicators of problem areas. In a properly running pump, the diaphragm looks a little stretched with no marks visible on either side of the diaphragm. If there is a rupture in the diaphragm towards the liquid end side, the diaphragm will look something like this. This is usually caused from over priming of the hydraulic system. If the pump runs at 100% stroke with no back pressure for long periods of time, or after replacing the diaphragm, the priming procedure is not followed correctly. It is possible to over prime the hydraulic side, and almost immediate failure will occur when the pump restarts. If the diaphragm has small permutations from the contour plate, this is usually caused from sudden internal pressure relief in the discharge valve not seating properly. Due to cavitations, the diaphragm will look something like this. The internal relief valve is set at 10% above the operating pressure to protect the pump. Over 10% of the system side causes the relief poppet to lift and the hydraulic oil is returned back to the drive case, causing the diaphragm to collapse against the contour plate until the discharge balls are steadily seated. The pump will continue to run in relief until the overpressurization from the system is below the pressure relief valve poppet spring. This is why we recommend that the diaphragm be replaced if the pump runs in relief longer than 24 hours. The 
The replenishment valve has to be depressed in order to replenish oil loss from normal air bleed. Keeping this in mind will help in the diagnostics process. Insert the new diaphragm into the liquid end. Slide the liquid in against the plunger body and insert two bolts opposite of each other. Being, making sure that the discharge valve is at the top. Tighten with a wrench the tube bolts evenly until the liquid end touches the plunger body. If there is a gap between the liquid end and the plunger body, then the diaphragm may have slipped. Be sure to loosen the bolts and reinsert the diaphragm into the liquid end and retighten. Insert the remaining bolts and torque evenly to about 20 foot pounds. Each liquid end has a different torque. Torque the liquid end bolts to 35 foot pounds for the size 17, 85 for the size 30, and 120 foot pounds for the size 40 liquid ends. You are now ready to prime the pump.